problem with playing the headphone game is escalation. Because you go from something that's cheap to something that's a little better, and something that's a little better, and something that's a little better, to something that's a little better. And so this is where I am now. I'm at a $300 pair of Mr. Speaker Mad Dogs. Not the Mad Dog Pros. According to some research, the Mad Dog Pros are simply more bassy, and I am not concerned with more bassy. I like a nice, neutral, clean uh, low end. So, yes. These are a yes. These, I'm just, you stop watching the video now. Put these on your list of what headphones you want to try or buy. These are them. Uh, first off, we'll go, with, we'll go with comfort before anything else. Now, these are originally Fostex headphones that this guy, Mr. Speakers, buys. Rips them apart. They're, they're planar magnetics by default. They're actually the cheapest closed planar magnetics you can get. Or well, actually might be the cheapest planar magnetics, period. But they're not when he's done with them, because it like, doubles the price from the Fostex. So it's got Fostex hardware, Fostex hardware. He adds this leather strap. He adds these lamb leather. Not 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 NVX, you know, oh look, angle pad NVX. No. No. He adds severe lamb leather custom shaped pads. Which you can buy, by the way, separately for $65 for the pair. And he throws it all together. I pulled the cups apart because I had to repair this pair because it was double it was a uh it was a used pair that was broken that I got cheap. So I see all the all the modifications on the inside. He's padded on the inside, added stuffing. All sorts of things are going on inside of here. And what comes out is a $300 headphone that's really, really, really hard to beat. For either comfort or sound. So, I mean, comfort... If you look at these, the... the oh, I think it's memory foam in here, too. It's just a big, squishy ball of insane head sex. Head sex, what does this is? Should be putting condoms on these. Keep you from getting pregnant. Best, pe be most comfortable headphones you'll ever wear, period. Straight up. I love the NVXs, especially when you put these pads on. They're very good. But these aren't leather. And these are. And if you're a carnosaur of dead animal skin, you're going to know it. All right, so they're comfortable, and they're built pretty well, considering they're Fostex. So you've got this nice solid aluminum. Well, yeah, it's definitely aluminum. It slides up and down on here. It's actually a little stiff, probably the stiffest movement on any headphone I've used to actually get this to go up and down. Although, honestly, on the Hi-Fi-mans, here are my 300s, this system is pretty... Yeah, you know what? They're both pretty tough to move. But that just means they won't move on their own. So you got to get in there. You got to really uh, pay attention when you're adjusting them. Adjust them off your head. Put them on. Don't try to adjust them on your head. Uh, mine, for some reason, have a wire loop issue. It might be someone else did it or someone's trying to fix it. Where this little wire comes out and then goes straight up. And this wire comes out and goes around the whole thing and up. So that's just me. Uh... Propri I'm going to say proprietary wiring because it's got this. Here's this, here's the stock Fostex cable. Quarter inch, giant quarter inch with the size of that. It's like a 50 caliber round. And uh, a locking three and a half that goes in and then rotates. So now that's in there. And that's a pretty good system. It's an ex ex exceptionally long cable again. Looking at another like 10 footer. Uh, so, Mr. Speakers is nice enough when he sells them, when he sells this, he gives you the stock cable, and it gives you a fabric cable that is five feet? Is it a six-footer? It's a six-footer. Well, look at it, a little tiny thing. And this isn't a full right angle, but the head is small enough to fit in here. And really, this is the only one I've been using, honestly. So, I mean, this is great. That's a no. That that's you know I can plug this right into my uh, EO9K, and that's fine. Or you could wrap this up and put it in storage. I don't really. I don't need ten feet, and I don't need the giant the giant cable. Uh, also, I'm using this, which I've taken the little metal covers off that it came with. Instead of having one of these, you plug it into the quarter inch and adapt it for a little extra safety. Uh, this is a just lengthy quarter inch to three and a half millimeter 
That way, again, if something goes catastrophically wrong, this just points at where the wire is getting pulled and let's go. So I'll link to this because that's. I wish it was a little shorter. I wish it was like that long. But you'll live. You'll live. So now, how hard are these to power? Pretty damn hard. I'd say equally as hard as the HE 400s. Although the uh, actual array in there is smaller, much smaller than it is in the 300s. As it is in the 400s. It is still uh, pretty difficult to drive these. Which is why I brought out my home setup. See, because these are I'm using at home. And what, is I, what do I use at home? I'll show you exactly what I use at home. I use a JDS Labs ODAC, the RCA version. That doesn't affect quality. That's just so I could have RCA out the things and 3.5 miller out the things. And the FIO E09K, which is still my favorite headphone amp. And is powerful enough to power these at, on low gain and then on high gain. Which is actually, it's really close, low and high gain, when I plug these in, so that's something to go along with. Now, what else do I have to say about these build-wise? Nothing. Most comfortable headphones, when you, when you put them down, they either squeeze the pads, or you got to rest the bottom of one into the cup of the other, and then reverse it, because you're obsessive now. Now you're obsessively resting it. Comes with a little bag, says Mr. Speakers, that's fine. These sound like crack. Let me put this into perspective. You know how open headphones are supposed to sound. They're supposed to sound like it sounds wider than it is. Like you're in, like as if these speakers here were playing to you. Like, oh, it puts the headphones on, it sounds like speakers. And that's true most of the time. They do get out there. Closed headphones don't tend to do that. And honestly, these don't sound like open headphones. You know, what they sound like isn't closed or open or semi-open or semi-closed. These sound like something completely different than all those headphones. The only way I could describe it is imagine if you shoved giant cubes on the side of your head, you know, six inch by six inch, just cubes. And in the each one of those cubes was a hundred little speakers. Front, back, top, bottom, out to the sides and in. And when you play music, and I'm not sure at all what determines this factor, the sound comes from anywhere inside that cube it feels like. I've heard parts of songs that are definitely coming from behind me. They're just coming from behind me. When you have those people with the with those 7.1 headphones, and they're like, oh, when I hear things behind me. Well, apparently, these do that. I'm not sure how they do that, considering that the, you know, the actual array is only like that big and shoved in there in a closed unit but uh yeah holy god holy god impressive stuff happening i i did some comparisons here an hour ago i was listening to these then i listened to the same playlist with these and all the songs i picked out to demo these on the when the next video on the recording video i played on those and they weren't impressive the songs weren't impressive. I still like these headphones. They still sound like good open headphones. But whatever anomalies happen in the music that cause these headphones to perform the way they do uh, does not translate to just standard open cans. It's like they're like alien alien headphones. I don't know. I don't even. I don't even. I don't even. Now I only had the Alpha Dogs on for about I don't know a minute and a half at the audio show, and they were just. I didn't quite get it. Because I don't know the music. If you don't know the music, then you can't get it. Because I, I could be listening to like the greatest recorded piece of all time. If I've never heard it on anything but Alpha Dogs, then I'm just going to be like, well, this is what it sounds like. That's great. You know, I have a very particular and peculiar uh, taste in music. So when I listen to something on 27 different pairs of speakers and headphones, I know exactly what I expected to sound like. And what it actually sounds like is, if it's different than what I expected, that's either a good or a bad thing. And on these, it's a very, very, very good thing. Because it is just... You could just sit there bla blasting. Because they're closed, you shouldn't have to play things loud. And for some god-awful reason, that I'll have to ask Mr. Speakers about at some point next time I'm talking to him, why do I have to play all my music so damn loud through these headphones? I enjoy it qu quiet, but I'm like, oh my god, I need to have more of this. I just keep turning this knob until it's like 
there. And all of a sudden, I realize my hearing loss is going to be far, far worse at an older age. The best way that my... My friend bought a pair also. My friend, uh, he bought a pair and was a dick and didn't want to send them to me for review. So then I found a pair. I'm like, screw you. Now I got a pair. And his description of how these sounded, because he had them two weeks before I, I got them, was that they don't quit. And I'll tell you what that means. When you put on a really complicated song, something that's just got things going on and there's cymbals crashing and low end, every headphone on earth quits at some point. You you hear it and the bass line comes in and something else has to go away because usually on a speaker, it's just, it's just moving. There's only one speaker. You know, when you have like a, a two-way speaker or a three-way speaker, uh, you know, the highs... This is only for the highs, it's only for the for the mid-range, and then you got the bass down there and the subwoofer, and everything has its own little place. But in a headphone, in a standard headphone with a single driver, they have to do everything. And that means that when the big bass note comes in, it's got to do this, and it also has to do this, and it also has to, you know, it has to do everything in one driver. And things just get destroyed and super complicated loud music it's just it can't do it and it just sort of quits and you you'll hear things that aren't as good you know they'll just be like uh i'm trying real hard but i can't now with a planar magnetic instead of a speaker pushing like this it's and this is a really bad example because i'm using my hand it's little tiny slits of metal that go up and down and up and down up and down that squeeze like that and they shoot air out from between them so when a bass note comes on, it does that and it shoots more. And when it hides, it shoots less. But it has to move so little compared to an actual driver that's moving in and out. It has to move so little that it has so much more control over it that it just doesn't care. It just doesn't care. I had, you know, Everybody Loves a Carnival by uh, Chemical Brothers? Everybody Loves a Carnival. Just look up that song. And that's one of the most complicated songs ever. It's like it was a test song that they just, they drew up and said, let's put like, I don't know, cymbals here and then we'll have a guy playing a trombone. And then we'll have a, it's just, so everything happens. And you put on headphones, it gets super, it sounds compressed. It just, the, head, the, the one driver's trying to do everything once and I can't do it. And on these, it doesn't fucking care. Everything, everything is in its place and nothing gets quieter when something else gets louder. It's just, just constant. It's just constant bombardment of music. Uh, we're going to talk about the sound signature. I, I personally like neutral. I am a neutral guy. I like my brainwaves. I like my NVXs because they're neutral. I don't like the MV, uh, M50s because they tend to attempt to be neutral, but at the same time they just shit all over your ears with bass and treble and Everyone, I don't know. No one can seem to agree on how they how their uh, frequency response is. It's a bit of a V in my mind. Now, since these are neutral, they're not, you'd say, boring. But they're not boring. Because whatever they're doing in there is just magical. And this is a tough sell because these are not cheap. This is their cheapest ones and they're $300. So I'm, I'm stepping up the game here. You know, after this, if I want to upgrade headphones after this, what am I getting? What the hell am I getting? 650s? Do I step into the HC 700s or something? I don't even know. I don't even know if I want to know. Because I really do... Once I've heard these, I pretty much put all the other headphones that I ever wanted and just... Oh, I don't want those. These. These are fine. These are fine for now and forever. Till death do us part. Nice. Okay. So the highs are actually, when I compare the two, the, these highs are much more piercing compared to these. The low end is much tighter on these compared to these. I mean, forget, I can't even compare to these. I like these and they're what they were and they're good, but, but oh my god. The words are failing me. I'm just staring at this and so are you. You're just staring at these going, God, those look comfortable. They take a lot to power. You can't do them on a uh, portable device. I'm not even sure if a SMS LM2 
would push these. I don't have one to test. I have a Fio. I have the Fio E 10K. I'm still trying to sell. If you want to buy a Fio E 10K for like $10 cheaper, I will throw it in a post office envelope and mail it to you. I'll link of that in the description because I got to sell that thing. Oh my god. I, I can't... I can't put in the words, hey, stop buying anything but these for over $200. I want to spend $230 on headphones. Save up, spend $300 on these. The pros, the pros that have just better low end, which is irrelevant to me because these have such amazing low end as it is. I can't even imagine what that would be. It would just be too much. Are $450. $450. And the Mad Dogs are like $600. Six or seven hundred, and then the Alpha Primes are over a thousand. So, I don't, I don't even know how to how to get into that. Mister Speakers just puts his little stickers. These are stickers that cover over the Fostex labeling, and he sells you these, and you baby them for the rest of your life, which they should last. But they should last. Now. I could tell a different. Let me get into something else. Let me get into. Back to Escalation again. I listen to these straight out of, like, a laptop. I've listened to them straight out of uh, Fio E10K. I've listened straight out of um, this, the SMSL SD793-2. I listened to them straight out of the damn Tascam's headphone in and the XDA2. And you note it... With these headphones, you notice the difference in DAX. You notice all those little things that most people tell you that they can't tell apart? You notice. You notice if the amplification is enough. Because on this, I was pushing past half to power these correctly. So it pushes them. This will push them. But I did, on some quiet songs, I was steadily approaching maximum volume, which you never want to do. So when I got it home, and I had it hooked up to my desk setup... The ODAC, which is the best DAC, I think anyone ever needs to sell you. If you need connectivity and other options, you can't buy that. But for actual signal to signal, from digital to analog, you, nobody needs anything more than that. And being that this is the headphone amp I chose over my SAP 2, after hours and hours of a being, I'm pretty confident in its abilities. And with high and low... And I can just leave this thing on low, and I have to run about half on low. If I put it on to high, I have to run it about 11 o'clock. 10.30, 11 o'clock. And the sound does change. And I think you don't want to run a headphone amp on high if you don't have to. So I usually leave it on low and right there. So let's... This, my setup here now, you're looking at... $165 for this. I got it cheaper than that, obviously. $110 for this. Because before we even get to the headphones. And then you get to the headphones, which are $300. So, when you buy good headphones, this stuff had better be up to spec. Because you're going you're gonna to be able to tell. You know, everyone says, you know, speakers are the most important thing when you, do, when you do a stereo setup. You could have these speakers and a Leapi amp. And if you... Don't have, you would rather have that set up than cheaper speakers and a better amp. But when you get headphones involved, when you, when you minimize this, these components, these things here, they start to matter a whole lot more than the end result headphones. Because I put these on things and they couldn't power them and they completely sounded wrong. So if you're going to get something like this, be prepared to upgrade this stuff or this stuff to this stuff. It's just it has to be done because you will as soon as you try it and you don't and you realize hey something's so off and you try something like this you're gonna wake up and it's gonna suck that's a suck day when you wake up and you go God I need better fucking amplification for these headphones damn it damn it you start punching the table so yeah I obviously like these I'm going to attempt to record them now with the uh, headphone the headphone rig and i may fail i may pass i'm not sure 
All I do know is I'm ordering some Chinese food to celebrate. And then I'm going to listen to some music on these. Oh, gaming on these? Very impressive. Not quite as impressive as on actual open headphones. And I'm not sure how that translates again, open versus closed, where soundstage comes into it. I think it's just the neutrality of these on gaming is, is just, it's good. But you always want a little bit of a, you want a little bit of a Sex Panther experience. You put on some big open cans. Yeah, I can't, I can't talk about these anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I haven't been listening for the last, whatever, how long this is, 17 minutes. And I need to get them back on my head. So, other video, the, the demo video for listening to these is in the comments. Good luck.